All you're... right, so we are 42 minutes and change into today's flight test. You're seeing the light show start <laughs> as Starship is getting closer to its reentry. If you're just tuning in, we were able to successfully make it to orbit, run into a couple of issues as we've coasted to our entry point over the Indian Ocean. At this point, we had lost attitude control of the ship and entered into a spin. The team made the call to do what's called passivate the vehicle, so we're essentially venting all of the remaining propellant overboard, and it's going to make an uncontrolled reentry. Important to note, this is a contingency that is planned for, and we clear the zones in the Indian Ocean where these entries could take place. Um, so we're not going to come down exactly where we would have had nothing happened, uh, but we do clear a tremendous amount of uh, space out in the Indian Ocean um, in the event that we run into this. You always, we, we understand that there are always risks, essentially with these flight tests, with the hardware, uh, but we don't really accept any compromise when it comes to protecting people. And it is uh, one thing to note is we will actually still re-enter in our, our planned airspace zone, which is good. That that is exactly what we uh, plan for. You know, we do plan for if something does go a little bit off nominal, uh, that we have enough airspace cleared out for situations just like this. Yeah. Re-entry is still just that really critical phase that we need to try and gather as much data, as much information as possible is a fully reusable heat shield has never been flown before the history of space flight. And that's, that's a, that's something that Starship still has to crack. And so we had a whole range of experiments on this one, um, at this point, and we just started to lose some of our cameras. So it's very possible that we'll start to stop, start to lose contact with Starship, um, a lot sooner than we would have if it was a nominal reentry. Um, so we are expecting it to, break up essentially on its re-entry over the Indian Ocean. So not able to do a lot of our own orbit objectives today, uh, but just the fact that we, you know, got it into space was just, that was just a really big moment for a lot of the team. Yeah, and another thing to note is that Super Heavy did fly for its second flight today. It first flew on flight seven, and it made it all the way to uh, our shutdown of all the engines and stage separation, getting ship into its suborbital trajectory today. Um, it did ignite its uh, 13 engines, but it did demise uh, at that point. Uh, we did plan to f uh, fly it back down to Earth at a higher angle of attack, and we do uh, expect it to stress the vehicle a lot more than what we've seen previously. So it's not unexpected that we did lose the booster before we got to the actual landing. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to continue to hang out and see if we get any updates on ship. It does look like... We might be getting some video back soon. There we go. So this is a view essentially on the top part of Starship. You're looking up at the payload bay and towards the nose cone. So uh, views are going to be a little bit scarce potentially as, again, we are in essentially a tumble. We had lost that attitude control. Um, so Starlink, when it's able to connect, able to feed this down. Uh, we are at the phase where we would expect entry to start uh, within the next minute or so. So we are entering uncontrolled, but again, we're entering into an airspace and a sea space that is cleared and monitored in advance of launch and before we get to this phase. And with the views that we are able to see, you are seeing a lot of that plasma build up uh, during reentry. We do expect the vehicle to see about 1400 degrees Celsius. And there you can see the, the flap uh, feeling that temperature there a uh, little bit melting away uh, but as we expected with the uh, uh, spinning of the vehicle we are no longer controlling the attitude of the vehicle so this is now at this point in the the test flight it is expected uh, to see it begin to uh, demise a little bit on its way back down to earth yeah and so we'll we'll stick with it for as long as we're kind of getting any reach back from the ship as it starts to make this re-entry. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> it, it'll, it's re-entering actively <laughs> yep. right now. Um, and again, we did do what's called passivation. So you essentially vent all of your excess propellant overboard before you hit the atmosphere. Um, that's a safety measure we can take on the ship 
while you still have contact with it. Um, so that was done. It's now coming down in the predetermined hazard area that was cleared ahead of flight. Um, not controlled, so we're not going to get all of that reentry data that we're still really looking forward to. Um, this is kind of a new generation of ship. It has different flaps, improved heat shield, a whole lot of things that we're really trying to really put through the ringer um, as there's a whole lot we still need to learn before we get to kind of the next step that we're hoping for, which is going to be that ship going orbital and eventually coming back here for a catch. So getting through one of these fully is going to be really important. Um, it's not going to be today, uh, but we are just going to stick with the ship, see what else we can learn uh, as it makes its way through the atmosphere and brings an end to the ninth flight test. So we'll stick yeah. with it. If you're just now joining us, we did have an on-time liftoff from Starbase Texas at 6.30 p.m. Central Time of the Flight 9 vehicle. We did have some incredibly stressing objectives today. Uh, the Super Heavy Booster flew for its second flight. Uh, it first flew on Flight 9 and made its way to take ship all the way up to stage separation, uh, doing its first second flight ever, which is pretty incredible. Uh, we did lose the booster on the way back down as we did uh, fly it back down at a higher angle of attack. So as expected, we did um, have it demise on the way back down. Yeah, we uh, were able to get all the way to that landing burn though. So we made it through that higher angle of attack. So a lot of great data that's going to help us improve those future booster flights. Yeah, we did do the directional flip and it worked. Yep. It was actually Flipped a great right view direction. that we saw. Um, and then ship continued, six healthy Raptor engines in the beginning of its flight, making it all the way to Seco and coasting for quite a while. Uh, we made it to uh, the expected time that we would open up the payload door. Uh, unfortunately, the door did not open as we expected it to, so we did not deploy the eight Starlink satellites. Yeah, we ran into a couple of issues once ship got there, but I can tell you it was a pretty crazy moment for a lot of the people that were standing here for ship to make it there. <laughs> uh, it's been a couple of flights, um, but it was really exciting to see. Ran into some issues on orbit. We weren't able to deploy the Starlinks. We eventually lost attitude control, dealing with some propellant links inside of the ship. Um, and we did lose attitude control. And just to confirm, we did lose contact with the ship officially a couple of minutes ago. So that brings an end to the ninth flight test. So still a lot of work to do, but really big moment. Chris, how's everybody doing over there in Hawthorne? What's the vibes, man? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it, it's a test program, I mean, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn, and that was definitely the vibe and the atmosphere here at Hawthorne. Uh, would have been great to see ship get all the way through its objectives today, but with all of that data that came down through the Starlink system, uh, we're, we're definitely going to learn it, and we're definitely going to fix that and push forward. Uh, also, great to see the responsible engineers here in Mission Control uh, talking with the flight control teams in Starbase. We talked about how it's great having that expert uh, that expert knowledge on console to be able to go to at a moment's notice and that really helped us make the right decisions in orbit today when we decided to passivate the vehicle so we will be here looking forward to flight 10 and uh, some success on future flights all right well obviously congratulations to everybody that poured so much time effort into getting this ship this rocket off the pad it the last two months have been an absolute like gauntlet for a lot of people and we're continuing to learn more about this ship about this rocket we are trying to do something that is impossibly hard 
and it's not always going to, you're not going to reach it in a straight line. We've said there's going to be bumps, there's going to be turns, but seeing that ship in space today was a hell of a moment for us. So congratulations to every single person who put time, effort, sweat, anything into that rocket. Yeah, this is exactly the SpaceX way. We're going to learn, iterate, and iterate over and over again until we figure it out. So thank you to everybody for tuning in. Thank you for the fine people of Cameron County, including the residents of the newest city of Starbase, uh, as well as the Coast Guard, Federal Aviation Administration, Government of Mexico, as well as the Australian Space Agency. All right. Now... This is not the end. We're going to have a whole bunch of cool liftoff stuff, so be sure to follow us on X at SpaceX for more. And we will see you back here for Flight 10.